Good morning, everybody. It is uh, Friday, April 5th, 2024. It's time for Bible Reading Fellowship. We're going to pick up our reading this morning in Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah 28, reading out of the Legacy Standard Bible, the LSB. If you do not have your own copy of this fine translation, you can open up a second tab in your computer and in the search bar type read, R-E-A-D dot L-S-Bible dot O-R-G. Read dot L-S-Bible dot O-R-G. And when that page opens up, uh, type Isaiah 28 in the search bar, hit enter. That'll bring up the text, follow along as we read, and when we get to the end of the chapter or the bottom of the page, just click on the right arrow, and that'll move you right along to chapter 29. Chapter 29. John, good afternoon, sir. Josh, good morning. Michael, good morning. Once uh, we'll wait a couple more minutes, see if any more of the regulars log in. Hey, Holly, Eunice, good afternoon. Uh, I did. In fact, I wrote the stu I wrote a study guide for the book on holiness. Um, I don't think it's around here. I don't think I have one upstairs, but. Wait just another minute or so and then uh, share what happened out at the University of Iowa yesterday. Chris, good morning. Oh, no, 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 no. I wrote, I wrote a study guide for it. Peter, good morning, brother. Um, well, the large ones uh, that I showed yesterday... Here is the website, Abolitionist Rising is where I got the signs. Uh, now, again, with those signs, 
Signs are $30 each. They're vinyl signs. Very good. Very good signs and uh, very sturdy. But you actually have to do some work to mount them to a piece of corrugated plastic. So there was some work involved in that. So go ahead, Chris. Um, depending on what the question is, um, we'll determine how if I've got much time to answer. But so uh, while Chris is typing his question, Matt and I, um, hey, good morning, Maria. Matt and I, Matt, one of my brothers at the church, we went out to the University of Iowa yesterday, spent the afternoon out there. And uh, we're on the campus for about three hours and uh, had conversations with more than a dozen students. And some of those conversations went very well. There was a young man named Calvin uh, who we talked to twice, uh, probably a half hour or so in each conversation. We talked to him for a while. He had to go to class, came back, said, I didn't do very well on that test because he had been thinking about our conversation, um, young man, part of the uh, uh, conservative students group there on the campus and and uh, had another conversation with him, which was interrupted for a while by a, a very unreasonable young man who um, did not know the meaning or the definition of the word hypocrisy. Everything, everything we said to him was hypocrisy. <laughs> um, uh, but by the end of our conversation with Calvin, he um, um, he said, you, you guys have changed my life. Um, you know, of course, we don't want to change his life. Uh, I think we understood what he was saying. But um, if the Lord didn't save him yesterday afternoon, we think he's probably pretty close to the kingdom. Um, had a conversation with a, a young Catholic lady named Olivia. Got to share the gospel with her. A um, young man named Eli heard the gospel. Um, I can't remember, I can't remember his name, but a young atheist student came up and talked to him for a little bit, uh, pretty quickly dismantled his worldview. And then one of his atheist friends literally drug him away from the conversation before we can get to the gospel. Two very sweet uh, uh, Christian uh, students, two young ladies, uh, really never heard of abortion abolition before. And so I was able to talk to them for a little bit and explain to them the distinction between um, um, uh, between pro-life and abolition. The two are not uh, the same thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Chris, uh, God, God disciplines his children and his children are those who uh, um, have turned from their sin and put their trust in Jesus Christ alone for their salvation. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know why your right leg gave out. Um, but God does discipline his children physically. Sometimes, um, he, uh, may allow them to experience some kind of physical infirmity, um, uh, some kind of emotional distress, a lack of sleep, <laughs> um, there are many ways that God disciplines his, his children, but he always does it for their good. He always does it out of love. It's uh, God punishes, God punishes unbelievers. He disciplines his children. Uh, God's wrath abides upon unbelievers. God's love, mercy, and grace abides upon his children. And as a loving father, he disciplines, he disciplines his children. So. So again, we had, uh, Matt and I had a very good afternoon out there um, on the campus of the University of Iowa. Uh, looking forward now to employing some of uh, these new signs uh, before uh, before we went out to uh, the university. I put, I, uh, put together another sign. I still have one more to put together, but we took the two signs out that I showed you yesterday morning and, uh, and proved to be a very good tool for uh, um, uh, for basically drawing bees to honey. <laughs> well, bees make honey. So, uh, anyways. Um, yeah, Chris, I, I, I can't answer that question if you're under the wrath of God, my friend. Um, if you put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ alone for your salvation, you will not be under the wrath of God. It's as simple as that. Receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior if you haven't already. 
and you will no longer be under the wrath of God. You will be under his grace and his mercy. So, all right. Let's begin our time in a word of prayer, and then, uh, and then uh, we'll uh, read Spurgeon's morning devotion for today. And then we will uh, jump into Isaiah chapter 28. These chapters seem a little longer in this section, so I think I read, what, 13 or 14 chapters yesterday, so I'm not sure how many chapters I'll get through this morning, so we'll see. But uh, let's begin our time in a word of prayer. And uh, we will get started. Father in heaven, you are great. You are awesome, God. Uh, and the fear of you is the beginning of wisdom for all of us. Uh, you are right when you judge. You are good when you punish. You are good when you discipline. Uh, you are good when you extend grace and mercy and forgiveness. You are perfectly good in everything you do. You're perfectly good in every aspect of your character. You're perfect. You're God. You're holy. You're mighty. And again, you are awesome, Father. And we come to you this morning, Lord, uh, with various hearts, I, I would guess, with different things on our hearts and our minds and different, uh, varying degrees of faithfulness, varying degrees of belief, varying degrees of trust various circumstances, and you are sovereign over all of it, Father. You are absolutely, perfectly sovereign over all of it, and you are good. And in your providence, you've gathered us this morning, Lord, to read your word. I pray, Father, that you administer to our hearts and our minds through your word today. Your word is good, as you are good. Often, so often yesterday, as Matt and I were talking to students, we would appeal to your word. We would appeal to the infallibility, inerrancy, God-breathed nature of your word as the standard for holiness, for righteousness, for morality, for truth. Your word is good, Father, just as you are good. Lord, I ask that you would bless the reading of your word now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Isaiah, chap oh, sorry. Spurgeon's Morning Devotion, drawing from Luke 23, 26. Yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah. You know, um, Peter, Peter just texted me and uh, reminded me that uh, uh, illness and infirmity are part of the fallen world that we live in. I mean, you know, at, yeah, that's a great point, Peter. Uh, just just because we're sick doesn't mean we're being disciplined by God. Um, just because we're injured doesn't mean we're being disciplined by God. Um, and sometimes he allows, sometimes he allows those infirmities and illnesses in our life, in, in the life of his children, to uh, to strengthen our faith, to test our faith, to mature our faith, uh, so that we can testify of God's goodness, grace, and mercy in our life in the midst of those various struggles. So, so yes, yeah, I, I certainly don't want to leave anyone with the impression that uh, um, that uh, for the Christian or for the unbeliever that uh, illness and infirmity is automatically uh, a form of God's um, judgment or dis or punishment or discipline. Uh, God uses those infirmities in many, many, many different ways. So, all right. Uh, Spurgeon's morning devotion is drawn from Luke. Thanks for that, Peter. Uh, Spurgeon's morning devotion is drawn from Luke 23, 26, which reads, On him they laid the cross, that he might bear it after Jesus. We see in Simon's carrying the cross a picture of the work of the church throughout all generations. She is the cross bearer of G after Jesus. Mark then, Christian, Jesus does not suffer so as to exclude your suffering. He bears a cross, not that you may escape it, but that you may endure it. Christ exempts you from sin, but not from sorrow. Remember that and expect to suffer. But let us comfort ourselves with this thought, that in our case, as in Simon's, it is not our cross, but Christ's cross, which we carry. When you are molested for your piety, when your religion brings the trial of cruel mockings upon you, then remember it is not your cross, it is Christ's cross, and how delightful 
is it to carry the cross of our Lord Jesus? You carry the cross after him. You have blessed company. Your path is marked with the footprints of your Lord. The mark of his blood, blood red shoulder, is upon that heavy burden. Tis his cross, and he goes before you as a shepherd goes before his sheep. Take up your cross daily and follow him. Do not forget also that you bear this cross in partnership. It is the opinion of some that Simon only carried one end of the cross and not the whole of it. That is very possible. Christ may have carried the heavier part against the transverse, be transverse beam, and Simon may have borne the lighter end. Certainly it is so with you. You do not you do but carry the light end of the cross. Christ bore the heavier end. And remember, though Simon had to bear the cross for a very little while, it gave him lasting honor. Even so, the cross we carry is only for a little while at most. And then we shall receive the crown, the glory. Surely we should love the cross, and instead of shrinking from it, count it very dear, when it works out for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Amen. All right, now turning to the Word of God, picking up our reading in, um, in Isaiah 28. God's Word tells us this. Woe to the proud crown of the drunkards of Ephraim and to the fading flower of the glorious beauty, which is at the head of the fertile valley of those who are overcome with wine. Behold, the Lord has a strong and courageous agent as a storm of hail, a tempest of destruction, like a storm of mighty overflowing waters. He has set it down to the earth with his hand. The proud crown of the drunkards of Ephraim is trodden underfoot and the fading flower of its glorious beauty which is at the head of the fertile valley, will be like the first ripe fig prior to summer, which one sees. And as soon as it is in his hand, he swallows it. In that day, Yahweh of hosts will become a beautiful crown and a glorious diadem to the remnant of his people, a spirit of just judgment for him who sits in judgment, uh, a might to those who turn back the onslaught at the gate, and these also reel with wine and stagger from strong drink, the priest and the prophet reel with strong drink. They are swallowed up by wine. They stagger from strong drink. They reel while having visions. They totter when rendering a verdict, for all the tables are full of filthy vomit without a single clean place. Whom would he instruct in knowledge, and whom would he provide understanding about the report? Those just weaned from milk? Those just taken from the breast? For he says, order on order, order on order, line on line, line on line, a little here, a little there. Indeed, he will speak to this people through stammering lips in a foreign tongue. He who said to them, here is rest, give rest to the weary, and here is repose, but they would not listen. So the word of Yahweh to them will be order on order, order on order, line on line, line on line, a little here, a little there, that they may go and stumble backward, be broken, snared, and taken captive. Therefore, hear the word of Yahweh, O scoffers, who rule this people who are in Jerusalem, because you have said, we have cut a covenant with death, and with Sheol we have made a pact. The overflowing scourge will not reach us when it passes by. For we have made falsehood our refuge, and we have hidden ourselves with lying. Therefore thus says Lord Yahweh, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a tested stone, a costly cornerstone for the foundation firmly placed. He who believes in it will not be disturbed. It will make uh, justice the measuring line and righteousness the level. Then hail will sweep away the refuge of falsehood, and the waters will overflow the secret place. Your covenant with death will be canceled, and your pact with Sheol will not stand. When the overflowing scourge passes through, then you will become its trampling place. As often as it passes through, it will take you. For morning after morning, it will pass through any time during the day or night, and it will be the sheer terror to understand the report. The bed is too short on which to stretch out, and the blanket is too narrow to wrap oneself in. For Yahweh will rise up as at Mount Perizim. He will be stirred up as in the valley of Gibeon to work his work, his unusual work, and to labor in his labor, his exceptional labor. So now do not carry on as scoffers, lest your fetters be made stronger. For I have heard from Lord Yahweh of hosts of complete destruction, one that is decreed on all the earth. 
Give ear and hear my voice. Pay attention and hear my words. Does the farmer plow continually to plant seed? Does he continually turn and harrow his ground? Does he not level its surface and sow dill and scatter cumin and plant wheat and rose, barley in its place and rye within its area? For his God disciplines and teaches him proper judgment. For dill is not threshed with a threshing sledge, nor is the wheel of a cart driven over cumin. But dill is beaten out with a staff and cumin with a rod. Grain for bread is crushed, but he does not continue to thresh it forever, because the wheel of his cart and his horses eventually disturb it. He does not crush it longer. This also comes from Yahweh of hosts, who has made his counsel wonderful and his wisdom great. Chapter 29. Yeah, again, these chapters are longer, so I don't know if we're going to get to 10 today. Woe, o Ariel, Ariel, the city where David once camped, and year to year observe your feasts on schedule. I will bring distress to Ariel, and she will be a city of mourning and moaning, and she will be like an Ariel to me. And I will camp against you, encircling, encircling you, and I will fortify siege works against you, and I will raise up fortifications against you. Then you will be brought low from the earth you will speak, and from the dust where you are prostrate. The words will come. Your voice will also be like that of a spirit from the ground, and your speech will whisper from the dust. But it will be that uh, the multitude of your enemies will become that, like fine dust, and the multitude of the ruthless ones like the chaff which blows away. And it will happen instantly, suddenly. From Yahweh of hosts you will be punished, with thunder and earthquake and loud noise, with whirlwind and tempest and the flame of a consuming fire. And it will be that the multitude of all the nations who wage war against Ariel, even all who wage war against her and her stronghold and who distress her, will be like a dream, a vision of the night. And it will be as when a hungry man dreams, and behold, he is eating, but he awakens, and his soul is empty. Or as when a thirsty man dreams, and behold, he is drinking, but he awakens, and behold, he is faint, and his soul is not quenched. Thus the multitude of all the nations will be who wage war against Mount Zion. Astonish yourselves, and be astonished. Blind yourselves, and be blind. They become drunk, but, do not, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. For Yahweh has poured over you a spirit of deep sleep. He has shut your eyes to the prophets, and he has covered your heads to the seers. The entire vision will be to you like the words of a sealed book, which when they give it to the one who is literate, saying, please read this, he will say, I cannot, for it is sealed. Then the book will be given to the one who does not know how to read a book, saying, please read this. And he will say, I do not know how to read a book. Then the Lord said, Because this people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but they remove their hearts far from me, and their fear of me is in the command of men, learned by rote. Therefore, behold, I will once again deal marvelously with this people, wondrously marvelously, marvelous, and the wisdom of their wise men will perish, and the discernment of their discerning men will be hidden. Woe to those who deeply hide their counsel from Yahweh, and whose deeds are done in a dark place. And they say, who sees us? Or who knows us? You turn things around. Shall the potter be considered as equal with the clay? That what is made would say to its maker, he did not make him, he did not make me. Or what is formed say to him who formed it, he has no understanding. Is it not yet just a little while before Lebanon will be turned into a fruitful orchard and the fruitful orchard will be counted as a forest? On that day, the, the deaf will hear. Um, on that day, the deaf will hear where I lost my place. I lost my, oh, there, I'm sorry, verse 18. <laughs> On that day, the deaf will hear words of a book and, and out of darkness and thick darkness, the eyes of the blind will see. The afflicted also will increase their gladness in Yahweh and the needy of mankind will rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. For the ruthless will come to an end and the scoffer will be finished. Indeed, all who are watching out to do evil will be cut off, who cause a person to sin by a word, and ensnare him who reproves at the gate, and defraud the one in the right with meaningless arguments. Therefore, thus says Yahweh, who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob, Jacob shall not now be ashamed, and now his face shall not turn pale. But when he sees his children, the work of my hands in the midst, they will sanctify my name. Indeed, they will sanctify the Holy One of Jacob, and will stand trembling before the God of Israel. Those who err in spirit will know discernment, and those who criticize will gain learning. Chapter 30. 
Woe to the rebellious children, declares Yahweh, who execute counsel but not mine, and make an alliance but not of my spirit, in order to add sin to sin, who go down to Egypt but do not ask me, to find strength in the strong defense of Pharaoh and to take refuge in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore the strong defense of Pharaoh will be your shame, and the refuge in the shadow of Egypt your dishonor. For their princes are at Zoan, and their messengers reach Hanes. Everyone will be ashamed because of a people who cannot profit them, who are not for help or profit, but for shame and also for reproach. The oracle concerning the beasts and the Negev, through a land of distress and anguish, from where come lioness and lion, viper and flying fiery serpent, they carry their wealth on the backs of young donkeys and their treasures on camel's humps to a people who cannot profit them. Even Egypt, whose help is vain and empty, therefore I have called her Rahab, who has ceased. Now go, write it on a tablet before them, and inscribe it on a scroll, that it may be in the time to come, as a witness forever. For this is a rebellious people, false sons, sons who are not willing to listen to the law of Yahweh, who say to the seers, you must not see, and to those who have visions, you must not behold visions for us of what is right. Speak to us pleasant words. Behold visions of illusion of illusions. Get out of the way, turn aside from the path, cease speaking before us about the Holy One of Israel. Therefore thus says the Holy One of Israel, since you have rejected this word and have put your trust in oppression and deviousness and have relied on them, therefore this iniquity will be to you like a breach about to fall, a bulge on a high wall, whose breaking comes suddenly in an instant, whose breaking is like the breaking of a potter's jar. So ruthlessly shattered that a potsherd will not be found among its pieces to take fire from a hearth or to scoop water from a cistern. For thus Lord Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel, has said, In repentance and rest you will be saved. In quietness and trust is your might. But you were not willing. And you said, No, for we flee on horses. Therefore you shall flee. And we will ride on swift horses. Therefore those who pursue you shall be swift. One thousand will flee at the threat of one man. You will flee at the threat of five. Until you are left as a flag on a mountaintop and as a standard on a hill. Hi, Samantha. Uh, we're in chapter 30, picking up now in verse 18. Uh, therefore, Yahweh waits with longing to be gracious to you, and therefore he is on high to have compassion on you. For Yahweh is a God of justice. How blessed are all those who wait for him. O people in Zion, inhabit, inhabitant in Jerusalem, you will weep no longer. He will surely be gracious to you at the sound of your cry. When he hears it, he will answer you. The Lord has given you bread of distress and water of oppression. He, your teacher, will no longer hide himself, but your eyes will see your teacher, and your ears will hear a word behind you. This is the way. Walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right or to the left, and you will defile your graven images overlaid with your silver, and your molten images plated with your gold, you will scatter them as impure thing, as an impure thing and say to them, Be gone. Then he will give you rain to the seed for the seed which you will sow in the ground and bread from the produce of the ground, and it will be rich in fat. And on that day, your livestock will graze in a roomy pasture. Also, the oxen and the donkeys, which work the ground, will eat salted fodder, which he has been winnowed with shovel and fork, which has been winnowed with shovel and fork. And it will be that on every lofty mountain and on every lifted up hill, there will be streams running with water on the, on the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall. And the light of the moon will be as the light of the sun. And the light of the sun will be seven times brighter, like the light of seven days on the on the day Yahweh binds up the fracture of his people and heals the bruise, bruise he has inflicted. Behold, the name of Yahweh comes from afar. Burning in his is burning is his anger, and heavy is his smoke. His lips are filled with indignation, and his tongue is like a consuming fire. His breath is like an overflowing torrent, which reaches to the neck to shake the nations back and forth in a sieve of worthlessness, and to put in the jaws of the peoples the bridle which staggers one to ruin. You will have songs as in the night when you set yourself apart as holy for the festival and gladness of heart as when one mar marches to the sound of the flute to go to the mountain of Yahweh, to the rock of Israel. And Yahweh will cause his splendid voice to be heard and the descending of his arm to be seen in raging anger and in the flame of consuming fire, in the cloudburst, downpour, and hailstones. For at the voice of Yahweh, Assyria will be dismayed when he strikes with the rod. And every blow of the appointed staff, which Yahweh will cause to rest upon him, 
will be with uh, the music of tambourines and lyres, and in battles, waving weapons, he will fight them. For Topheth has long been ready. Indeed, it has been prepared for the king. He has made it deep and large, a pyre of fire with plenty of wood. The breath of Yahweh, like a torrent of brimstone, sets it afire. Chapter 31. Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help and rely on horses and trust in chariots because they are many, and in horsemen because they are very mighty. But they do not regard, but they do not regard at the Holy One of Israel, nor seek Yahweh. Yet he also is wise and will bring about an evil demise and does not turn his words aside, but will arise against the house of evildoers and against the help of the workers of iniquity. And the Egyptians are men, uh, are men and not God, and their horses are flesh and not spirit. So Yahweh will stretch out his hand, uh, and he who helps will stumble, and he who is helped will fall, and all of them will come to an end together. For thus says Yahweh to me, as a lion or the young lion growls over its prey, against which a multitude of shepherds is called out, and it will not be dismayed at their voice nor afflicted at their noise, so will Yahweh of hosts come down to wage war on Mount Zion and on its hill. Like flying birds, so Yahweh of hosts will defend Jerusalem. He will defend and deliver it. He will pass over and provide a way of escape. Return to him against whom you have deeply rebelled, O sons of Israel. For in that day every man will reject his silver idols and his gold idols, which your hands have made for your, you as a sin. And the Assyrian will fall by a sword, not of man, and a sword, not of man, will devour him. So he will flee from the sword, and his choice men will become forced laborers. His rock will pass away because of terror, and his princes will be dismayed at the standard, declares Yahweh, whose fire is in Zion and whose furnace is in Jerusalem. Chapter 32. The old, a king, will reign righteously, and princes will rule justly. Each will be like a refuge from the wind and a shelter from the storm, like streams of water in a dry country, like the shade of a huge rock in a weary land. Then the eyes of those who see will not be blinded, and the ears of those who hear will pay attention, and the heart of the hasty will discern knowledge, and the tongue of the stammerers will hasten to speak clearly. No longer will the wicked fool be called noble, or the rogue be spoken of as generous, for a wicked fool speaks wicked folly, and his heart does wickedness. To do ungodliness is to speak error against Yahweh in order to make the hungry person empty. He even causes the thirsty to lack a drink. As for a rogue, his weapons are evil. His counsels, uh, wicked scheme. He counsels wicked schemes uh, to wreak destruction um, on the afflicted with lying words. Even though the needy one speaks justly, but the noble man counsels noble plans, and by noble plans he rises up. Rise up, you women who are at ease, and hear my voice. Give ear to my word, you complacent daughters. Within a year and a few days you will quake, O complacent daughters. For the grape harvest is ended, and the fruit gathering will not come. Tremble, you women who are at ease. Quake, you complacent daughters. Strip, undress, and put sackcloth on your waist. Beat your breasts for the desirable fields, for the fruitful vine, for the land of my people, in which thorns and briars shall come up. Indeed, against all the joyful houses and the exultant city, because the palace has been abandoned, the populated city forsaken. Hill and watchtower have become caves forever a joy for wild donkeys, a pasture for flocks, until the Spirit is poured out upon us from on high, and the wilderness becomes a fruitful orchard, and the fruitful orchard is counted as a forest. Then justice will dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness will have in the fruitful orchard, will live in the fruitful orchard, and the work of righteousness will be peace, and the service of righteousness, quietness, and security forever. Then my people will live in a peaceful abode, and in secure dwellings, and in undisturbed resting places, and it will hail when the forest comes down and the city will be utterly laid low. How blessed will you be, you who sow besides all waters, who let out freely the ox and the donkey. Chapter 33. Woe to you, O destroyer, while you were not destroyed, and he who is treacherous, while others did not deal treacherously, treacherously with him. As soon as you finish destroying, you will be destroyed. As soon as you cease to deal treacherously, others will deal treacherously with you. O Yahweh, be gracious to us. We have hoped in you. Be their strength every morning. Our salvation also in the time of distress. At the sound of the tumult, peoples flee. At the lifting up of, of yourself, nations scatter. Your spoil is gathered as the caterpillar gathers. As locusts rushing about men rushes about 
uh, about on it, as locusts rushing about men rush about on it. Yahweh is exalted, for he dwells on high. He has filled Zion with justice and righteousness, and he will be the stability of your times, a wealth of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. The fear of Yahweh is his treasure. Behold, the brave men cry in the streets. The messengers of peace weep bitterly. The highways are desolate. The, travelers has ce the traveler has ceased. He has broken the covenant. He has rejected the cities. He has no regard for man. The land mourns and languishes. Lebanon is humiliated and rot withers. Sharon is like a desert plain, and Bashan and Carmel lost lose their foliage. Now I will be on high, says Yahweh. Now I will be lifted up. Now I will be lifted up. You have conceived chaff. You will give birth to stubble. My breath will consume you like a fire. The peoples will be burned alive like cut thorns which are burned in fire. You who are far away, hear what I have done. And you who are near, acknowledge my might. Sinners in Zion are in dread. Trembling has seized the godless. Who among us can sojourn with the consuming fire? Who among us can sojourn with the continual burning? He who walks righteously and speaks uprightly. He who rejects greedy gain and oppression and shakes his hands so that they hold no bribe. He who stops his ears from hearing about bloodshed and shuts his eyes from looking upon evil. He will dwell on the heights. His refuge will be the strongholds of the cliffs. His bread will be given him. His water will be sure. Your eyes will behold the king in his beauty. They will see a far distant land. Your heart will meditate on terror. Where is he who counts? Where is he who weighs? Where is he who counts the towers? You will no longer see a fierce people, a people of unintelligible speech, which no one uh, no one comprehends, of a stammering tongue, which no one understands. Behold, Zion, the city of our appointed times. Your eyes will see Jerusalem and abode at ease, a tent which no, will not be folded. Its stakes will never be pulled up, nor any of its cords ever be torn apart. But there the mighty one, Yahweh, will be for us, a place of rivers and wide canals on which no boat with oars will go and on which no mighty ship will pass. For Yahweh is our judge. Yahweh is our lawgiver. Yahweh is our king. He will save us. Your cords hangs slack. Uh, they cannot hold the base of their mast firmly nor spread out the sail. Then they pray. Uh, then the prey of an abundant spoil will be divided. The lame will talk take the plunder. And no one who dwells there will say, I am sick. The people who inhabit there will be forgiven their iniquity. Chapter, let's see. Yeah, chapter 34. Draw near, O nations, to hear and pay attention, O peoples. Let the earth hear as well as its fullness, the world and all that springs from it. For the indignation of Yahweh is against all the nations and his wrath against all their hosts. He has devoted them to destruction. He has given them over to slaughter. So their slain will be cast out, and their corpses will give off their stench. And the mountains will be drenched with their blood, and all the host of heaven will rot away. And the sky will be rolled up like a scroll. All their hosts will also wither away, as a leaf withers from the vine, or as one withers from the fig tree. For my sword is satiated in heaven. Behold, it shall descend for judgment upon Edom and upon the people whom I have devoted to destruction. The sword of Yahweh is filled with blood. It is sated with fat, with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For Yahweh is a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Edom. A wild oxen will also fall with them, and young bulls with strong ones. Thus their land will be soaked with blood, and their dust become greasy with fat. For Yahweh has a day of vengeance, and a year of recompense for the cause of Zion and its streams will be turned into pitch, and its dust into brimstone, and its land will become burning pitch. It will not be quenched night or day. Its smoke will go up forever. From generation to generation it will be laid waste. None will pass through it forever and ever. But pelican and hedgehog will possess it, and owl and raven will dwell in it, and he will stretch over it the line of utter full, of formlessness and the plumb line of utter void. Its nobles, there is no one there uh, whom they may proclaim king, and all its princes will be non-existent, and thorns will come up in the, its fortified towers, weeds and thistles in its fortified cities. It will also be a haunt of jackals and an abode of ostriches. And the desert creatures will meet with the wolves. The hairy goat also will cry to its kind. 
Surely the night creature will obtain relief there and will find itself a resting place. The owl will make its nest and find its escape there, and it will hatch its eggs and gather them in its shade. Surely the falcons will be gathered there, every one with its kind. Seek from the book of Yahweh and read. Not one of these will be missing. Not None will lack its mate. For his mouth has commanded, and his spirit has gathered them. He has cast the lot for them, and his hand has divided it to, to them by line. They shall possess it forever. From generation to generation they will dwell in it. Chapter 35. The wilderness and the desert will be delighted, and the Araba will rejoice and flourish like the crocus. It will flourish profusely and rejoice with rejoicing and shout of joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of Yahweh, the majesty of our God, strengthen limp hands and give courage to the knees of the stumbling. Say to those with an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. The recompense of God will come, but he will save you. Then the eyes of the blind will be opened and the ears of the deaf will be unstopped. Then the lame will leap like a deer and the tongue of the mute will shout for joy. For waters will break forth in the wilderness and streams in the Araba. Then the scorched land will become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. In the haunt of jackals, its resting place, grass becomes reeds and rushes. And a roadway will be there, a highway, and it will be called the highway of holiness. The unclean will not pass by on it, but it will be for him who walks in that way. And ignorant fools will not wander on it. No lion will be there, nor will any vicious beast go upon it. These will not be found there, uh, but the redeemed will walk there. And the ransomed of Yahweh will return and come with joyful shouting to Zion, with everlasting gladness upon their heads. They will attain delight and gladness, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. I think we're going to stop there this morning. Um, how many chapters is that? That was eight, eight chapters today. So um, that was a good read. Those chapters were a little longer, and uh, we've been reading more than 10, I think, uh, several other days this week. So we're going to stop there. Um, we will pick up, Lord willing, tomorrow morning in Isaiah chapter 36. Hey, John. Isaiah chapter 36. I ho hope you all have a blessed day in the Lord. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning for another edition of Bible Reading Fellowship. God bless.